Hi everyone, this is Nathan Allen, staff writer and editor at Poets and Quants. Welcome back to another one of our Center Court alumni one-on-one -on -one interviews. Today we have Shannon McCormick, who just recently graduated from the University of Minnesota's Carlson School of Management with her MBA. Shannon, welcome, how are you today? Hi, I'm doing great, how are you? Great, thanks for being here again. Uh, we appreciate your time. So Shannon has kind of an interesting background where she started at Harvard University doing her undergrad there and totally wasn't on an, any business path at all, traditional business path, uh, more science-based. So why don't we start there? Tell us a little bit about your experience at Harvard um, and then where your interest in business kind of stemmed from. Okay, sounds great. Um, yep, so I went to Harvard uh, between 2008 and 2012. I was a biology undergrad major um, at the time, intended to apply to medical school. Um, so I never took an econ class. I never took uh, any kind of finance class. I was specifically taking uh, math and science classes in college. Um, I wanted to take some time off between applying to medical school after I graduated. So, and I definitely wanted to stay in the healthcare arena. So I applied to and got a job at Epic, the EMR company in Madison, Wisconsin. And I was an implementation consultant. So I went out to client sites, so to hospitals to implement the software and work kind of hand in hand with our customers uh, to customize it according to what their needs were, um, help them roll out the software, go live, troubleshoot any issues. and just realized that I really liked being in the working world um, and didn't actually want to go to medical school, but still wanted to be in the healthcare space. So that's kind of how I, I took a right turn from um, medicine to being in business. And I realized kind of five years into working that I was missing some core skills to be able to take my career to the next level. So that's why I ended up pursuing an MBA. Yeah, great. Thanks for that. And so whenever you started realizing that the MBA was going to be the next step for you, what were some of the things you did to kind of prepare yourself and start that application process? And, and what were some of the schools you were looking at attending? Sure. Um, so in, in terms of preparing for the application process, um, I think really a lot of it was reflecting upon whether an MBA would be right for me or not, and if it would be worth taking two years, a two year break from, you know, my career. And if that would actually accelerate my career after going through the program. Um, so I had worked as a program manager and a product owner. Um, after Epic, I worked at Optum, um, which is a, a sub part of United Healthcare, um, more of the technology arm, but um, I realized that in order to, to take it to the next level where I could be really a leader and an owner of something and help direct the business strategy that I needed to really have a better understanding of, um, of finance, of strategy, et cetera. And I was kind of missing that general framework in terms of how to think about business problems and how to solve them. Um, so that was kind of step one of, do I really think that getting an MBA is worth it? And I kind of ticked that box. Yes, it, it is. I need these core skills um, in order to get to the role, you know, that I want to be in. Um, and then the second part then was kind of what schools would offer what I'm looking for. So the University of Minnesota, to be honest, was the only school that I looked at because um, I knew I wanted to stay in the Twin Cities. They have an excellent reputation in the area, especially in the healthcare space. Um, they have an, an institute called the Medical Industry Leadership Institute, which is very well known in the area, um, and that's their healthcare track, basically. So I was pretty specific in, in what I was going for, um, and I knew that Carlson would give me the experiences and the network that I needed to pivot to where I wanted to go, which was uh, working in the medical device industry as a marketer. Right. Excellent. So then once you get to Carlson, um, it helps not making the move, you know, I, I would assume that you don't have to look for new, you know, housing or anything like that. You're already in Minneapolis and you kind of already have a feeling for the city and, and part of the program, but were there any things that surprised you or things um, that you experienced in the first 
few months to year um, that you just didn't expect? I was very pleasantly surprised by how inclusive the Carl Carlson community is. Um, my class size was about 90 students, which is very small compared to other MBA programs. And um, I really liked that aspect of it. So we had you know, a lot of events with the entire class and I got to know everybody pretty well. We all knew each other's first names and you know, what our background was, what our interests are. Um, so we had a two week orientation and I was just like very pleasantly surprised by how inclusive everybody was. It really felt like a tight knit community right from the get go. So um, that's something that you know, I, I really enjoyed about my experience at Carlson. Yeah. And then what were some of the more helpful um, aspects to the program and specifically whenever you're looking um, to land your first job? Uh, what were some of the things that um, kind of showed up early on in your first job and, and what were some of the things that helped you land that first job? Sure. Um, the experiential learning component is what helped me the most. Um, so whatever school you end up going to, I would really take advantage of those opportunities to do consulting projects for um, actual clients and getting to work on real world business problems. At Carlson, um, they have the Millie, the medical industry uh, valuation lab where we got to assess new technologies that entrepreneurs were creating. So it gave us the opportunity to look at uh, the regulatory landscape, the IP landscape, competitive landscape, and, and really kind of get an understanding of if this product could, you know, if it, if it meets an unmet need and if it could, you know, really survive in the business world and, and take off. So it was, uh, that was one of the best experiences for me getting to do a valuation on a product and um, kind of form my opinion of whether it's something that an investor should invest in or not. So, uh, yeah, I'd say the best thing is experiential learning. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, that's super helpful. Um, and then, you know, beyond um, kind of the classroom and the professional things that, that you're developing, uh, you know, the MBA is two years to kind of transform yourself as a person if you choose mm -hmm. to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that was something that you were looking to do. And if so, what were some of those more intangible outside of the business norm transformations that you saw in yourself over the two years? Sure. Um, I've been like pretty aware of what my, my shortcomings are. So going into business school, um, public speaking is something that I, you know, I knew I struggled with and I decided that I was going to push myself to, you know, have to give as many presentations as possible or take on as many, you know, public speaking opportunities as I could. Um, and what I learned about myself is, uh, you know, once I had done it a number of times and it became more regular, it was much easier than I thought it was. So for me, uh, I learned that, you know, new things aren't as scary as I think they are. And I have to push myself, you know, just to do them and get it under my belt and become more comfortable with it. And then, um, you know, it's something that I can tackle and feel pretty confident with. So, yeah, I, I knew that business school is kind of an opportunity to, to start new and, you know, become who I wanted to become. So I just took advantage of that and, and tried to get in front of people and, and public speak as much as I could. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And then, you know, you, you mentioned earlier about the culture of Minnesota Carlson and how it's a smaller program and how it's very inclusive. I'm wondering if you can give our viewers any other insights into the Carlson culture, um, you know, for, for students who applicants who are looking at Carlson versus maybe some other schools, uh, peer schools, what are some things you think sets Carlson apart in terms of the culture? Um, from other schools, other MBA programs? Um, yeah, like I said, just very inclusive. Like we had a, a group me with all 90 students on it and um, everyone would invite the entire class to an activity. So even if it was just a game night at somebody's apartment, they would send a chat to the entire Carlson group. So 80 students uh, to come over and hang out. So it just felt like 
you know, everything was very open. There were no kind of groups or cliques. Um, you were invited to do everything and anything that was going on at the school. Also, we have a lot of clubs, which I know many schools have, um, and the ability to create new clubs. Also, you're able to kind of transform uh, the culture at Carlson pretty easily. So for future classes, um, the administration asked for our feedback on what went well this year, what didn't go well, what we would recommend, you know, that the school does differently for future classes. So I felt like our opinion and our voices were really heard, which was great. Yeah. Um, so we had, you know, the opportunity to meet with, you know, the president of the school because it is a, a smaller school, but getting that kind of visibility where she would hear, you know, what we think is, um, going well, not going well, what we would like to see more of, where we think, you know, more resources need to be dedicated to things. So I think we just got, you know, access to things that students at other schools wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And then lastly, if you could give advice to yourself, right as you were starting the the MBA application process, go back in time and, and give advice to yourself, what would that advice be? Sure. Yeah. I remember, uh, when I was applying, I wondered if like I had good enough experience that would be attractive to, um, you know, an admissions committee. And looking back, like, yeah, I did have a pretty interesting career up to that point, And I had learned a lot of key skills. So my biggest piece of advice would be to be confident in the experiences that you've had and think about those key skills that you've gained and how that would be um, you know, how that would be beneficial to other students that you might be interacting with in terms of what your unique perspective is um, and what you can really bring to the table in terms of helping to round out the community and, and you know, help others see things differently. So just be confident in the experiences that you've had uh, when you're writing your application and going through interviews. Yeah, yeah. Great advice. Um, and then is there anything else that you think we might have skipped over that's important to your journey to Carlson that future MBA applicants should know about? Uh, the only last piece of unsolicited advice I'll give is um, really have a clear reason of why you're applying to business school and, and how you think that will help you. But once you get there, give yourself the flexibility to explore everything. So even if you think you're coming in for one specific purpose, like challenge yourself and try new things because you'll be surprised, you know, what really interests you and, and you might be passionate about something that you hadn't thought about before. So um, yeah, that would be my last piece of advice. Great, thanks so much. Uh, so this was Shannon McCormick who graduated with the MBA from the Minnesota Carlson School of Management. And my name is Nathan Allen, and I'm editor and staff writer at Poets of Quats. Thanks for your time. Thank you.